everyone. My name is Maggie Cast, and I'm delighted to be able to speak up for independent bookstores. Some of us have a little more time to read these days, and an independent bookstore is the perfect place to get some help in finding the book you really want if you're not sure what it is, or finding the book you're finding hard to get a hold of. Uh, books, uh, bookstores like uh, the Bookseller in Chicago, uh, which also has a cafe where you can have refreshments or meet with a friend. Uh, bookstores like Women and Children First, also in Chicago, a great feminist bookstore where I've actually launched each of my three books. Um, also, uh, 57th Street Books in Hyde Park, where I used to live, which is also associated with the Seminary Co-op Bookstore. Uh, these are all great bookstores and there are so many more. I am not in a study or an office. I'm sitting on my bed because that is where I actually do all my writing and revising. Um, so uh, this is just the place where I'm most comfortable. If I look up from my computer, I see the window and all these plants. If I look down, I see the pattern on this bedspread, which I dearly love. And if I look over here, I see all the books that I am currently reading or have recently read. So uh, you see here, um, The End of Days by Jenny Erpenbeck. She's a German writer and I like her work a lot. Um, a little bit earlier, I read her book, Gehen ging gegangen, which means go, went, gone. Um, this is maybe my favorite book of this year. Uh, it's called He Held Radical Light and it's by the poet Christian Wyman, subtitled The Art of Faith, The Faith of Art. Uh, it's a book about poetry, but not so much his own. It's mostly about other people's poems. Here is uh, Rachel Swearingen's How to Walk on Water, which is going to be launched at the Bookseller in Chicago uh, very soon. I believe the date is uh, October 5th. Now I'm sitting uh, at my desk in my study, and this is where I take care of the business of writing. So that's uh, submissions, um, publicity, promotion, record keeping, uh, all the aspects of writing besides the actual process of writing itself. Uh, so this is where I try to get the word out about my memoir called uh, The Crack Between the Worlds, a dancer's memoir of loss, faith, and family. Uh, this is where I promote my novel, A Free Unsullied Land, a coming-of-age story that takes place in Chicago in the 30s. And my most recent book, which was launched both at Women and Children First in Chicago and at Annie Bloom's Books in Portland, Oregon. It's called Side by Side, but Never Face to Face, a novella and stories. This is one of several bookcases in my house. This one is in my study. Uh, these are mostly plays and poems, which I've uh, read a lot of ever since uh, I was a child. So there's several shelves full of those. Over here are books about dance, reflecting my first career before I began to write. And over here are theology books, uh, reflecting my shift from concert dance to liturgical dance. That's dance in worship in churches and temples, as well as schools and nursing homes. And there's more of those down on this shelf. You may wonder where are all my fiction books, if that's what I write. Um, they're all downstairs, alphabetized by author, about three bookcases full, so a lot of books. I thought I would read you a very brief excerpt from the book I mentioned earlier, He Held Radical Light by Christian Wyman, which is, as I, as I mentioned, a book about poetry and faith, and it's also uh, partly a memoir about his, himself. In 1992, I found myself in Northern California. It was my first year on a Wallace Stegner Fellowship at Stanford, and it was Denise Levertoff's last year of teaching. She had recently been diagnosed with lymphoma, which I did not realize at the time, and which, at any rate, would have meant nothing to me, aside from the muted and momentary flash of foreboding that you yourself might feel if I told you how that same word, lymphoma, would ravage my own life 15 years later. This is as it should be. Promiscuous sympathy is pointless and damaging for all concerned. That little shiver of pleasure hyphen horror 
that goes through your spine when you read about someone else's suffering. That quick metaphysical incision like a bone marrow biopsy of the soul. It's for yourself. It is yourself soundlessly screaming, I'm going to die. It's for yourself. There's nothing wrong with this. It's one of the functions of literature to wake one up. But if you mistake this reaction for action, if you confuse this shadow sympathy for the kind of real feeling that operates in the world with risk and agency, and perhaps even grows cold to survive, if you mistake love of literature for love, well, dear reader, read on, read on. Now I'm out in my hall, and these are all my nonfiction books. Most of these are memoir on this bookshelf. Uh, all the way down four shelves worth. And then over here, a lot of these are craft books. You can see my, my synonym finder, my thesaurus, a book about poetry. There's some collections of essays. Down here are the books that I'm using now when I started uh, writing food essays. So I have been collecting food zines. These are like small zine type publications. Here's Diner Journal. Here's Put an Egg on It. And then one shelf down are all the novellas that I read while I was working on my novella, which is part of my most recent book. So there's uh, Dubliners, Goodbye Columbus, The Liar's Wife, a whole lot of uh, novellas. And then over here on this end of the shelf are books by Hmong authors, which I read when I was including a Hmong community in my uh, novella. And so here you see The Bride Price, uh, How Do I Begin, The Late Homecomer, Bamboo Among the Oaks, and one by a non Hmong writer, The Spirit Catches You When You Fall Down. This is my small upstairs porch, a place where I love to read, although I don't usually write up here. This is my basil plants that I use for cooking. Over here is the chair that I like to sit in. And over here is the pepper plant with the nice green pepper growing there. Once again, I'd like to thank all the independent bookstores in Chicago and elsewhere, uh, and the Book Industry Charitable Foundation, and all of you for listening. Thank you so much, and goodbye.